Hey everyone, and thank you for joining tonight. This is the first episode of Cameron's COVID Concert Miniatures, which is a new web series uh, that I'll be putting out every Tuesday night right here on my Facebook artist page at 8 p.m. Eastern. This is in response to the global pandemic, of course, that we're all dealing with right now. And it's another one of these sort of live stream uh, concert formats that people are very quickly adopting here as a way to continue creating art performing their music, and in many cases, generating income. Uh, so I wanted to jump on that and uh, f throw my hat in the mix here. This is something I hinted at last week on my Facebook page, and this is the first episode. So um, each each episode is going to feature some recent live performances, uh, videos of those taken from the concert halls uh, that they were performed in, and uh, you know presented here with some commentary, uh, mistakes and all. It's actually not so possible for me to live stream my own performances here at my house with my studio in the basement. I don't have all of the mics that I would need and all of the technology to produce a great quality product. So I figured this is the next best thing. Each episode will have an introduction like this, followed by the performances uh, of the different pieces featured on that episode, and then a little bit of post commentary at the end, and that's going to be it. So each episode will be about 30 minutes long. I'm going to hopefully, you know, cut it off at 30. Nothing should be any longer than that. Um, and actually today I have a, almost exactly 19 minutes of music. Uh, so that's kind of uh, fortuitous and ironic there. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, this is a way for people to continue creating their art and performing music. But it's also a way to hopefully generate a little bit of income. And so you'll notice that in the description of this video, I'll have my PayPal and my Venmo information there and my PayPal email address, Cameron at cleachmusic.com, and my Venmo handle at cleachmusic. And I'm just hoping that if you do tune in and you find value in this uh, video, whether that's by discovering new pieces, uh, consuming you know the performances, or you know taking an interest in some of the things I might talk about here as far as those pieces or life on the road or anything like that, I hope that you might uh, consider donating something like five or ten dollars, you know, the price of a latte or, you know, a drink or two at the bar, uh, something that would last about 30 minutes, right? Uh, just like these episodes would. And that would mean a lot to me uh, as I, you know, continue navigating these uh, uncertain waters. Everyone loves the word uncertainty right now. So I'll use that. Uh, these uncertain waters in this crazy time of this pandemic. Now, let's see, is there anything else? I wanted to discuss here before we get into it. Uh, yeah, I wanted to also feature largely underperformed or undiscovered music. So a lot of this music will be pieces that I've commissioned that I think they have legs and they need to see more performances, or it could be um, pieces that have already existed uh, that I stumbled upon and wanted to perform, and, and I think that a lot more people should know about them. And so I hope that if you do take an interest in some of those pieces, that you'll seek out the composer's website um, either purchase the music or look more into their music, anything. Uh, again, another way for us to you know, sort of stand together and to um, contribute to those artists who are maybe having a little bit of a tougher time uh, during, during this coronavirus. The first piece that's going to be featured today is uh, a drum set and electronics piece called 63 Across, 81 Down. It's by Ansel Neely. Um, this is a piece that I performed just recently at the 2D Festival at Denison University. Actually, both of these pieces that you're going to see today were taken from that performance at the 2D Festival. Um, so this was the last performance that I actually gave before all of this craziness struck and all of my gigs were wiped out. So this was my last time being on stage. It was the world premiere of this first piece by by uh, Ansel. And it was a pretty good performance uh, considering how you know world premieres can be uh, either really great or sometimes not so great. So I was proud of the performance. I was proud of the way it went. So please enjoy 63 Across, 81 Down by Ansel Neely.
And we're back. So I wanted to take this opportunity to talk just a little bit more about this piece as well as the composer um, before introducing the next and final piece that I will be showing you tonight on this episode. 63 across, 81 down. Uh, of course, when you look at that title, uh, it sounds like it's related to a crossword puzzle, and it is. Ansel was working with a crossword puzzle to generate a lot of the rhythmic structures and the sounds of this piece. And uh, you know, I don't know exactly how that system works, or what he was doing with it, but I, I did have an opportunity to see his initial sketches of the piece, um, and it was written on a, you know, sort of a single line on notebook paper with just different rhythms and notes from the crossword puzzle. So something, you know, like an E uh, vowel would generate a dotted eighth, etc., and then he would orchestrate that onto the drum set later. So it was really cool to see the process, um, a glimpse of the process that he used to generate all the material for the piece, and it's a good thing to, to be able to see that because the piece itself, uh, it actually has so many crazy time signatures within it and different, you know, crazy rhythms that um, when you first open it up and you see 916, 58, 44, 516, you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? But actually, when you learn that there is a rhyme and a reason behind all of this and that the composer took great care with how this piece was constructed, it's it's much easier to sort of buy in and say, oh, yeah, I totally see why this is like this. And um, and then you don't get so overwhelmed by looking at just, you know, the the breadth of what's going on in the piece. Um, and because of this, because of the sort of random or generative nature of working with this crossword puzzle, the piece has this anxious quality to it and this fleeting quality where 
there's all these crazy rhythms and things just flying by you, uh, and it makes you feel a little anxious because you can't you can't really grab onto anything. I actually really like that about the piece. I think it's one of the very best examples of what drum set repertoire uh, can and should be for a solo performer. Very often we think of drum set as something that's in the jazz world or in the commercial music world. And since we've been transplanting that into the concert realm, into the new music realm, and onto the recital hall stage, uh, we've seen great results and we've seen not so great results because we're dealing with an instrument that already has such a rich history and such an expectation behind it. Now, I think Ansel blew that out of the water and created an incredible piece here. And it's something that I'm going to recommend to everyone who's interested as a performer uh, to play. I think it's just a, a really great piece. And so I would encourage you to check out more of Ansel's music, to check out this piece in particular, uh, and send him an email if you'd like to play it. Okay, moving on now to the final piece on the program, Decay Number no. 2 by Matt Curley. This is a much more substantial piece in terms of its orchestration and in its length. It's about 14 minutes long, written for a giant multi-percussion setup with electronics. This was a piece that I commissioned back in 2017, and this is the result of that process. So we got a small consortium together to commission this piece. It was my first time ever leading anything like that, and so we only ended up raising something like $1,500. Um, and I felt terrible because Matt and his time in this piece is worth more money than I think I could ever give him. Uh, but he still graciously agreed to write it. So, uh, Decay Number no. 2 uh, is written with a lot of old field samples, field recordings, and um, different snippets of projects that Matt had worked on with musicians uh, during his time in Brooklyn through some different recording sessions and things that were never released. And so all of those different you know, samples and different tracks and everything sort of came together in this project. So I don't know that there's much to say about this. Um, I've been playing this piece since September of 2019. That's when I gave the premiere at the Rochester Fringe Festival. Um, and it's something that I try to play on all of my concerts because I, I think it's a great piece. Of course, it involves, as you'll see, so much gear, <laughs> um, which is a little bit limiting. Uh, but at the same time, I generally make sure that I have all of this stuff with me when I play it because um, I, every chance, chance I get to play the piece, I take that. Um, yeah. And just a couple of things to look out for. I do uh, lose my towel on my snare drum at one point. Uh, so a little uh, rhythmic hiccup there as I'm watching that towel fall off. <laughs> uh, but things happen, live music, whatever. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's any other like drastic uh, errors going on in this performance. I think it was a pretty good run of the piece. Some things at the end, but um, just a few note things. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, again, this is taken from the same performance. It's actually the piece right after I played 63 across, 81 down. I walked over to this setup and played this piece. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy Decay Number no. 2 by Matt Curley.
Great. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight on this first episode of my COVID concert miniatures. Both of the pieces that you heard performed here um, will be recorded sometime in the near future. Yesterday, I was supposed to go into the studio to record Ansel's piece. And with all of the social distancing and everything happening, uh, of course, that wasn't a possibility. So that will be recorded sometime soon, as will Matt's piece, and with the ultimate goal being to release a full album of percussion and electronics music, my, my debut album, sometime maybe in the late summer. So I'm planning on a Kickstarter maybe popping up to help fund that album sometime in May or June. Um, but again, you know, these recordings will stay up for now. And once I get uh, so self-conscious that I can't stand it anymore from uh, leaving all these little blips and mistakes in these recordings, maybe I'll take them down. uh, And hopefully by that time, I'll have the studio recordings that I can put up so that these can sort of still live on the Internet. So next week, uh, same time, same place, right here, 8 (laughs) p.m., I'm going to be featuring my recent performance of Jennifer Higdon's Percussion Concerto with the Dallas Winds. This was a performance that happened in January at the Meyerson Symphony Center in Dallas. A really fun performance. The absolute most beautiful hall I've ever played in. And it was a pretty surreal uh, experience being able to go out and being uh, featured with that ensemble. They sounded totally amazing. Uh, A stellar performance. Uh, I had a pretty good run of the concerto. A couple little things here and there. And I'll probably call those out on next week's episode, maybe give you some timestamps to look for some funny funny moments or something like that. But I uh, hope you'll, you'll join and tune in for that. Again, if you found uh, this, you know, found any value in this, if you enjoyed it, please consider donating something like five or ten bucks to the Venmo or the PayPal uh, links that are in the description. And uh, thank you again for tuning in. I'll see you all next week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and... Stay six feet away from everybody. Bye.